Hey YouTube, it's Robert Hall, and today we're comparing the Profoto A1 versus the new Godox V1. My channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create these type of videos without the influence from any specific camera brand. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a wide selection of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you end up enjoying this video and you're interested in any of the gear discussed in this video, show Adorama some support by using the links in the description below. Profoto A1 vs Godox V1. This has been a pretty dramatic release. I think these two companies have been competitors for quite a few years now, but this is the first time that we're really seeing Profoto acknowledge Godox as competition. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're interested in any of this drama, I've got links to the stories in the description below if you want to check that out. But that's not what I'm going to focus on today. I've now used the Godox V1 on multiple shoots all as an off-camera light. That's really how I'm interested in it. But one of the cool things about both the Profoto A1 and the V1 is that these are both master speed lights. I don't care if Profoto says that it's the world's smallest studio light, it's a speed light. And that's what they're designed for. They're designed to be used on camera or off camera. And when using it on camera, you can use them to control their suite of lights. Now, I think that this battle, so to speak, um, is kind of influenced by how Profoto marketed the A1 as being the world's smallest studio light, as being this natural and soft light source, which I don't think is really an honest representation of the light. Uh, these are both very small light sources and left unmodified, they are going to be really, really harsh. I mean, here's some samples you can see of both the Profoto V1 and the A1 used as a key light without any type of modification and they're hard light sources, right? There's nothing that you can change about that. There's nothing that you can do to fake relative size, right? Short of bouncing and you're in that instance, you're using a large surface. I just wanna make that clear guys, that this whole round head thing is not gonna be some type of game changer. It is cool to have the access to the quick magnetic modifiers like both systems have, but it is not going to automatically change the quality of light. You're not gonna be able to start using this 10 feet away and getting beautiful soft light on your subject. That's just not how the physics of light work. Just wanna make that abundantly clear for both of these products. All right, I've blabbed on enough about the landscape surrounding this competition. Let's get into how these two lights compare head to head. Cut right to the big question, power output. How do these two compare to one another? Is one of these more powerful than the other? No. I tested them both 36 inches away from a meter and both of them registered an F22. Absolutely identical F22. And going down the range, they were pretty consistent. Head to head, you can see on screen right now, I've got the numbers of what they registered at their various power settings. Now, both of these lights also have a nine stop power range, meaning they can go from full power all the way down to one 256 of their power. On Profoto, they represent their power levels with integers, so you can go from 10 all the way down to two. And both of these can be controlled with 10 stop increments. Now they both have that nine stop range and the Profoto actually hit nine stops on the head. I mean, it was perfectly nine stops from its highest power rating to its lowest power rating. And the Godox actually had a little bit more. It was 9.2 stops. So right there, the Profoto is a little bit more dialed in, a little bit more accurate throughout its power range. And the Godox has a little bit more range. Now power doesn't just matter in regular sync. We also want to know how efficient these lights are when they enter high speed sync. And both of these lights lost a significant amount of power once they enter high speed sync, roughly three stops. When we tested them outside, they seemed equally capable with high speed sync at similar distances. So all things point to these being absolutely identical in terms of power capabilities. Now, what does stand out as a big difference from them is their light pattern. The Profoto marketed itself heavily on how natural and soft the light pattern of the light is. And no, it's not soft. Yes, it's very even. It's a very smooth transition from edge to edge. It's much improved over speed lights that we've seen before. But Godox completely showed them up on this. The light pattern from the Godox V1 is such a smooth, transition, it doesn't even look like it's a Fresnel head at all. It is really, really impressive. So definitely quality of light pattern goes to Godox. On SLR Lounge, we posted a poll to see which one people would like better without knowing which light was which. And the percentages were over 90% 
in favor of the Godox light pattern. And when I put it in another group, it was probably over 95% online. Um, pretty much everybody agrees here. The more pleasant light pattern is from the Godox V1. I don't think there's any arguing that. But once you start bouncing or modifying this light, those minor differences between them, they're not gonna be very present. So if you're using this modified, chances are you're really not gonna see that difference at all. Recycle time. Another situation where these two are neck and neck. The Profoto A1 recycles in 1.2 seconds. The Godox V1 recycles in 1.2, 1.3 seconds. So there's a very, very tiny edge. In the past, I've done these graphs where we see what recycle time is associated with what light output, but there's no need to do that here because they're hitting the same exact light outputs at their full power. So these two recycle at the exact amount of time. Now, one advantage I do want to note about Profoto here is they're able to sustain that recycle speed without ever getting into any type of thermal issues. Whereas the Godox V1, after about 30 full power flashes, you go into thermal protection mode where it is protecting uh, the battery and it's a counter, it's not actually based on heat. That system hasn't changed at all, so yeah, the Godox V1 kind of loses if you're looking for how much you can get away with like shooting this light really fast. The Profoto A1 is definitely a little bit superior. That's based on the idea that you've actually got a battery to shoot on. And this is probably Profoto's biggest shortcoming is battery life. On the surface, the Profoto A1 is capable of 350 full power flashes, whereas the Godox V1 is capable of 480 full power flashes. Now, that's in ideal circumstances and it's not really accounting for things like standby time. Well, the Godox does great with its standby time. It does not soak up a lot of the battery. However, the Provoto A1 has to be one of the worst lights I've ever seen in terms of standby time. Just in the meter test, when I was trying to go through and meter it, we lost like half of the battery's power over only shooting like 30 or 40 shots. Not even at full power. This was across the entire power range. So in preparation for another shoot, we charged it all the way full again. We went out, we only shot with it the second time for a really short amount of time. And when we came back, we had under 60% battery left. And at that point I went live with Francisco and we were talking about our experience with the light live on his channel. And it kind of became a joke of, will the Profoto A1 die on standby by the time the stream was over? Over the course of that 90 minute stream, we fired the flash once just to show the flash duration, which we'll get to here in a moment. And it went from just over 50% power to dead. And the only thing that was on was the air receiver, which is what's waiting for the signal to receive a signal from the transmitter. And we posted about this and joked about it and people said, well, that kills the battery, but that is a basic function of using the flash off camera is having that receiving on. And for it to lose that much battery, just sitting around waiting for a signal is I think the biggest shortcoming of the Profoto A1. Next, let's talk about color consistency. Both of these products are designed to be extremely consistent with color, meaning that the color as you change the output level of the flash or change the conditions that you're in, maybe the temperature changes, both of these lights are going to stand up to that and deliver a very consistent color temperature throughout the power range. And I got to test them with my Sekonic C800, which thank you Sekonic for the C800, just so I could conduct these light tests because color is something that I've not been able to go over in detail before. But now that I have the C800, I can deliver some really accurate information to you. The Profoto A1, throughout all of my testing and metering it, the highest color that I saw was 5873 Kelvin. And the lowest that I saw was 5613. That is phenomenal color accuracy, and it's also the color range that we would expect right around daylight, which is 5500, so that is really well done by Profoto. Now, the Godox kind of beat and lost to it at the same time. The Godox only moved 94 Kelvin over the entire power range, not including HSS, but only moved 94 Kelvin, which is like plus or minus 50. That's really great, however, the color was from 6180 up to 6274 Kelvin. So this light is actually on the blue side for daylight balance flashes. So that's a touch higher of a number than we're used to. And I would expect more around the 5500 range. 
So just be aware of that, that this V1 is a little bit cooler than this typical daylight standard. Next, let's talk about the flash duration. The flash duration on both of these at full power is right around 1 400th of a second, and that is T.1 flash duration. Now, I did not just take this out of the specs. This was another thing that I was able to test using the Sekonic L858D meter. And I'm saying 400, but if I'm being specific, the Profoto A1 at full power was 1 over 384, and the Godox V1 was 1 over 405. Very slight edge to the V1, but not much to really make a point about. However, at their minimum power, which is the number two on the Pro Photo or one 256 on the Godox V1, same output level for both of them, the Pro Photo A1 got one over 12,700, which I was like, dang, that's impressive. And the Godox V1 got one over 27,800. That is the shortest flash duration that I've seen on any lighting equipment that I've ever tested. I've seen, you know, 15,000, I've seen close to 20,000. I've never seen that number. And then when we did it live on stream, we're going to test this one. <laughs> it's it's higher. It's even faster. It's higher. 131,700. That is ridiculous. Absolutely insane number. I don't know how useful that is considering it's such a small flash burst. I mean, one 256 of a speed light not many application that that's gonna be useful in. However, that does lend itself to comparing across the entire range. So as you go into the higher power levels, that means the Godox V1 is outperforming and then the Pro Photo kind of catches up every output that you go. And it really never catches up completely until you get to full power, it's pretty much the same. And that just means it's gonna be a little bit better at freezing subjects, at least at those really low powers. Both of them are operating at such a short flash duration that either would be excellent for stopping motion. Overall build quality, the Godox V1 feels really nice and solid. The Profoto A1 that I was using has a little bit of play in the head. Now this is a rental, so who knows who had this before and if they smacked it around a little bit or something. I don't know what that thing's been through before it got to me, and I don't know if that's any cause for concern. We also have an A1 that's been out for a while and has a lot of user feedback, whereas the V1, we're still talking about beta units and the newest ones are just hitting people's doorsteps. So we really don't have a history to compare to and I really can't make a call here as to which one is better built. And you guys should be aware by now that both of these pretty much have the same selection of modifiers. They both have bounce card, grid, gels, little snoot, all those little attachments that you can put on the head. There's not much to talk about here. They felt about the same level of build quality and thickness and durability. I will say that the Godox has a little bit more secure of a connection with the magnets. It just feels like a little bit stronger of a pull. Let me see. I don't think, this is not very scientific at all, but. And then the. What'd you now what'd that prove? This proves about as much as Jared Pullen's sniff test. <laughs> the Pro Photo still felt great, even if I shook it around like crazy. The magnetic modifiers weren't going anywhere, so both do their job exceptionally well. Hey, shake that shit, that's a prototype. So my final take on comparing these two is that I think Godox kind of one up to Pro Photo at their own game. I mean, so many of the specs of this light are identical when it comes to the important things like the power. When it comes to battery life, Godox definitely outshined Pro Photo. When it comes to the light quality, the base light quality, Godox definitely outshined Pro Photo. And then you take that information and you apply it to the fact that the Godox V1 is one fourth the price of the day one. I try to stay as unbiased as possible to just give you guys the information you need because, hey, if you decide based on the stats that I tell you that the Pro Photo is better for you, great, that's good. But I really, this is one instance where I don't see a significant argument for the Pro Photo short of I already have a bunch of Pro Photo gear and that's what I want to trigger. I need a Pro Photo A1 to do so. That I can't argue with. All right guys, thank you for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video on the Pro Photo A1 versus the new Godox V1. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you wanna see future videos on the tech and technique of photography, then hit that subscribe button. And until next time, keep on shooting.